All right, so at the beginning of the summer, I had great intentions of doing a What You Need to Know to Row an Ocean series. And I did, in fact, do the first couple of episodes, but I wasn't that happy with them. I've been a bit busy, so um, I kept putting it off. So I'm going to try and do a few short episodes just on the basics of what you need to get going, what you need to understand before you start planning the journey. So the first episode will be what it costs to row an ocean. Obviously, it's not an insignificant amount. And I hope Cheryl doesn't watch this because she might... Um, take me out the back and sort me out. Obviously the boat's the biggest cost, but there are also a wide variety of boats on the market. You can buy second hand, which is, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But what you need to consider is also that most people that row an ocean, row one ocean, step off the boat at their destination, never go back to the boat, don't clean it, it's stuck in a container, it sits with salty water, corroding everything for however long until somebody else picks it up and starts cleaning it up. So it might seem like a good deal, you've got to spend quite a bit on it to get it back in shape. Obviously also different types of boats, and I think I might do an episode just about different types of boats. It's quite a, a complex subject. So socks, when I first had socks built, I found what, what I considered to be the best boat builder I could find. Um, Jamie Fabrizio. Socks, bare boat, hand built to, to a really good quality. I mean, she was, she's absolutely perfect as a boat was about £55,000. Sounds like a lot of money, but in essence it took Jamie well over six months, seven days a week, working long days to, to get ready on time for me to do my first crossing. Uh, second attempt, Socks 2, similar kind of cost. I actually think he did a, a, a slightly better job because we made some changes, uh, but again the cost was, was quite similar. Obviously you've got high residual value in the boat when, when you've finished, but it's not as high as you might think. You know, a boat that's done a crossing has been exposed to the ocean, um, probably not, th not that well cared for, even though it might have only been for 60, 70 days at sea. Used quite hard, could have capsized a few times. Uh, so you can pick up a second-hand boat for £25,000 maybe, but you would have to spend 10 to 15 on that at least, and we'll, we'll go over those costs. It's really a, a safety and confidence thing. I wanted to know that where I was making big decisions about safety especially, thinking that you're leaving your family at home, that you made the best decisions possible and the best decisions you could afford. So I, I pushed the boat out, I guess you could say. <laughs> On top of the bare boat cost for socks, you've got electrical equipment, so your GPS, you've got your VHF radio, uh, AIS. Realistically, you have to allow for a new boat, probably £4,000 for electrical equipment, excluding the water maker it is the key to staying alive when you're at sea obviously They're about six grand for a for a decent shanker water maker if you're a solo then it makes 15 liters a, a an hour way more than you'll ever need i only ever use probably 10 liters a day and obviously you, you need to think in th throughout this costing process if you're going as a solo you're picking up the entire cost if you're going as a crew of four then everything's divided by four You've got solar panels to put on the boat. There's another couple of grand. Uh, communications, that's changed a bit in the last few years. The Iridium goes are the, the thing, in my opinion, to take. You can still take a handheld um, satellite phone, but I don't see that there's much point, to be fair. Um, you also need backups for certain things. Again, we'll go into that more in a, in a separate, uh, separate video. Um, so you need two Iridium goes, one as a, a safety backup thousand to twelve hundred pounds for your two iridium goes then your airtime as much as you decide to if you call home um, it's not very efficient burns up tons and tons of money you can text now quite happily off the app so that's a, a more efficient way of using your airtime but it's quite expensive three four five six dollars a, a minute and, um, and it's amazing how fast it burns up because you're also transmitting from your tracker uh, and sending back your emails and things every day. So every time you connect up, it's a couple of minutes. So uh, it can add up quite quickly, especially if you're on a budget. You need a decent tracker, various versions on the market. All of them seem to have occasional blips and problems. I use the yellow brick. I would say it's reasonably reliable, but we have had problems. They're very good at customer service though, even when you're at sea, so you're sure proof can contact them. Um, you know, that's another 900 pounds because you need a subscription for that as well. So you need an airtime subscription. 
a subscription to their their service so you can share the information offline so people can find out where you are safety so you need a, an epurb on the boat you need a plb a personal epurb basically um life jackets so if you're on your own you need to allow best part of a thousand pounds for that if you buy a used boat it might come with some of this equipment but again anything electrical would need servicing um, any electricals need fitting by a proper marine electrician so you don't have problems at sea if you buy a second hand boat especially i would recommend really stripping back the electrics and making sure that um, that everything is new all the connections are good and and somebody who knows what they're doing looks at that you need a medical kit medical kit for a solo row is about 400 pounds there are companies that actually make up specific rowing medical kits that are pretty good can't get some of the heavy painkillers these days so uh, you might need to do that through your doctor so a few extra costs there that's four or five hundred pounds clothing on my first trip <clears throat> i didn't buy any clothing i just took some old running clothing with me thinking oh, i'll be fine um you're at sea it's hot etc etc it's not as hot as you think <laughs> especially especially in the uh, even on the atlantic leaving the canaries um it's quite cold especially at night and also when you get wet it can be very cold so you need a, a decent set of cellar pets um, and a decent jacket at least. That's not inexpensive. You need to allow 800 to 1,000 pounds for, for decent kit. Depending whether you want to take an immersion suit, they obviously cost. If you're in one of the races and you have to take a, a life raft or depending on what type of boat you take, you might need to take a life raft. Uh, I didn't, but again, they're 1,500 pounds, 2,000 pounds. Then you've got to think about transport, depending where you're based. Um, how are you going to get to the start? If you're in the UK, for example, and you're doing the, the traditional trade winds route, you can drive from the, you can get on the ferry, drive down through Spain or Portugal, get on the ferry to, um, to the Canaries, and you can do Canaries to the Caribbean. Still, you've got ferry tickets, you've got to drive down there, you've got to tow the boat, you've got, somebody's got to obviously transport the trailer and the car back for you, depending where you're leaving from, where you're going to, Ferry costs at the time, fuel costs, adding a, a thousand pounds or so for that. Then the transport return, a bit difficult to kind of pin that down at the moment. I think my Indian trip may end up being cancelled because of getting into Australia. But I also think part of the problem at the moment is shipping anything from anywhere. Uh, costs have gone up dramatically. Apparently it's costing 18 to $20,000 for a, for a container. So if you're doing the race, there is some, some help. There's a couple of companies that ship boats back from Antigua or from the Caribbean, and they're, they're quite well tested, but they still have to pay the container rates. So normally you'd allow three and a half, four thousand pounds for transporting the boat back. If you're going further afield, doing the Pacific, for example, it can be quite expensive to get the boat. We, we ship the boat to San Francisco, and the first time I attempted to go to Hawaii, um, that wasn't inexpensive. I failed, so I had to have the boat transported back to Canada. That cost me $12,000 on the back of a truck. And then, obviously, you've got to get it back from, from Australia. Um, and I think that was about £6,000. Anyway, so if you were doing the Caribbean routes, you would normally allow three and a half, four thousand pounds £4,000, I guess. Accommodation at both ends, you obviously have to wait for a weather window at the beginning, so that can be a bit open-ended. And when you've finished, you can get out of there as quickly as possible, but you still have to ship the boat and unless you get somebody else to do that for you, which would obviously cost as well, um, you need to tidy the boat up, get her in the container, get her home. So you could allow whatever you like for that. Um, £1,500 or so wouldn't seem unreasonable. Food per person, probably about £2,500 in, in dehydrated food, another £1,000 in chocolate, jelly beans, whatever else. Um, and I'll say this about some of the some of the other costs as well is, is that although they are costs directly associated with the row they are costs that, that you might have incurred oh how have you got out so sorry for the interruption my sheep escaped and I've been chasing them about for the last hour um, the last big item is if you enter a race obviously the cost of that I don't know quite what that is exactly these days but I don't know, 12 to 15,000 pound, I guess, whatever it is. Even if you don't do a race though, you should allow that much for your shore crew. You need somebody who can do weather routing, safety advice, 
especially if you've never been to sea. Although the, the one thing that I didn't mention was the training courses. So you can go on, on quite, quite good basic sea training courses, specifically tailored around rowing. Um, that cost you six or seven hundred pound a person, I think, something, something like that. I would say for anybody in, inexperienced on the ocean, that's, a, that's probably one of the best investments that you make throughout the entire preparation for the journey. So in all in all, give or take, it's the best part of £100,000, whichever way you do it, whether you do a second-hand boat, new boat. So you can save money if you buy a second-hand boat, but I think there needs to be a, a, an extra level of attention to detail when it comes to things like resealing, Henderson hatches, you don't want your food to get spoiled while you're at sea, all those little things that deteriorate from, a, from exposure to the, to the harsh conditions out there. Um, seals, batteries, all that kind of thing. So that's about it, 100,000 pounds. I'll get you to the start line and, uh, and possibly get you home. The rest of it's down to you.